Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Not at all, Emeka. Sometimes we need to stand alone to stand strong together. Go figure. Last week's Sunday was International Women's Day, and so still in that vibe, I want to have a tete-a-tete -tete with my homegirls. So I'm talking woman to woman. I remember my early encounter of the Niger Women's ASOS. It was a parents committee to prepare towards sports day for a well-known private school. So dressed in my casual boho chic style, sandal, sun hat, I addressed my fellow mother with equal casualness. Hi, I said, my name is Ekene. Instinctively, I reached out to shake her hand. Delicately, she grasped the tip of my fingers. Note that this was before coronavirus or Ebola. Hello, my name is Mrs. Obi. I had to immediately respect myself. I soon learned that to be a Mrs. in Nigerian society required a certain kind of aloofness, a certain composure and decking in expensive weave and even more expensive designer handbag with high heels adorning skinny jeans, etc. I, on the other hand, clearly never got the memo. Inwardly, I wept at the girls trapped in women's bodies, girls who seemed unable to laugh with abandon, to be free to discover and explore life in an oyibo, childlike, unaffected way. Several years on, I still weep. My fellow women, Nigeria is difficult enough without our being our own worst enemies. We believe a lie about how women ought to be and how they ought to fit into this society and to prove this and to prove that to men and to ourselves. We're imprisoned by so much pretentiousness. My young male colleagues have been known to exclaim, Niger women can form, not knowing that it is they, the men and society that taught women to form. Life for an average Nigerian woman can seem like one continuous beauty pageant, take it from me, with men and even their fellow women as the judges. So they'll be asking, are you wife material, as I heard only just this afternoon? Could you pass as a yummy mommy or even a glam mama? Are you a superwoman, juggling home and work life in perfect equilibrium? When do we make time to be accepting of ourselves? No scorecards. In the words of someone I came across in the course of my reading only this week, Inyala Van Zont, loving yourself has nothing to do with being selfish, self-centered, or self-engrossed. It means that you accept yourself for what you are. Loving yourself means that you accept responsibility for your own development, growth, and happiness. So my advocacy is simple. Woman, it is imperative that you make time to laugh and play. Give yourself permission to spend quality time on your own, reading, writing, or even take the day off to catch up on much needed sleep. Go for long walks and enjoy nature. Breathe in, breathe out, and marvel at the unique article of human creation that you are. With or without makeup, weave on, weave off. You're perfect just the way you are. Mm. That's a nice. lovely piece. If, <laughs> if this wasn't TV, I would have been able to scoot over and give you a big hug. <laughs> you can do high five. <laughs> it was a All right. Well, so I, you know, I think that we women put a lot of pressure on ourselves, trying to be superheroes and, you know, juggle everything put you know take care of family work and trying to maintain this work-life balance and i want to state that there is no such thing as a perfect work-life balance there is no such thing as, as, as that so i think that um we need to take off the capes and embrace you know the 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 the, the where we are at that particular at that particular stage knowing that there will always be something that will take priority over the other. 
So there's going to come a point in time where your children will take priority over your work. There's going to come a time where your work will take priority over children. So you just need to, you know, juggle which one is more important than the other and, you know, accept it. Don't blame yourself. No guilt for mm. anything. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I find think. That, I find that, um, you know, at the beginning of your advocacy, the point you raised about um, that distinction, um, I, I don't know what to call it, class distinction between the, the married, the unmarried, mm -hmm. um, that I find that a lot, I find it amusing sometimes, you know, the point you raise about, oh, I'm Mrs. Mm. As if it's some title you've earned and, and, and it puts, and that's the thing where society will put a lot of, and I see it more and it, it's, it's not so much, yes, the, 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 the men folk, we, we, we also learn to that discourse, but I find it that a lot more of women do that. Yeah. They try and, you know, um, Why do you think that is? I, I, I don't know. I, it's just, it's, 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 it's a status. It's, 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 it's an attainment. Like, yeah, it's, it's like some achievement. Like, exactly oh, I am now a missus. And therefore, you must give me this. Society must recognize that, mm -hmm. that I've won this battle of... I don't understand it. <laughs> you know, I once I had a colleague... Now women... Sorry to okay. they, they, they take this a bit too far because they also pass it on to their daughters. Yes. Is, is, the, is the reason why you have well-brought-up daughters with no well-brought-up sons to live up to them. So mm -hmm. there's already a pressure, right, from when they were small to be a wife material. material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you teach them to do this, to do that, to be perfect for the man. And you, you never get that pressure, Graham. Did you get that pressure? No. I, 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 I didn't get that. Wow. I didn't get that. Maybe your pressure well, is different. I, I was, well, I would still say I'm, I'm much better because despite not having the same pressure as my uh, uh, siblings that were female, I still learned how to cook. I could do all those. In fact, I learned to make some dishes before my sisters did. Okay. Your mom taught you. Yes. Okay. So they did. Mm. You know, so it, those, those things, we still carry it on. And if we're not careful, our daughters are going to live exactly the same way that we are living right mm. now. Mm. Yes. Speaking on the Mrs. Achievement thing, you know, I actually, I, I once had a colleague who you could not address, even down to emails, you have to address her as Dear a missus. missus. Dear missus. Okay, she actually told you yes, that. Yes, she actually, you know, she will confront you and say, address that? <laughs> Dear missus. I mean, and so there was a case of a fellow married woman addressing her by her first name. Mm. And she says to the other married woman, no, I mean, with me, okay, I'm single, so you... So the inferior to her. Oh, it's obvious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, with me, it was, okay, it was easier, but mm. then if a married woman addresses you with your first name, and you pick an offense with it and say, no, don't yeah, address yeah. me as my name, address me as if it's some form of it's achievement. A mm. It's a club. It's a club. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, the famous married we women club. and we are on... <laughs> I, I think it's... Uh, we are on issues. No, you really. see, I think it's a, a sort of perverse way of fighting back at this whole male thing. Don't okay. forget, okay. the men are supposed to be cheats, running around with women up and down, you know, the no usual. Security, your so, marriage. so what they've done is to retreat from a club that gives them strength. Okay. And that strength is the Mrs. Club. Mm. So what, what you don't realize is that people react to things in ways that initially don't look like that's what they are reacting to. Mm. But that's what these women are reacting to. They're trying to show that there's something because their husbands in the meantime are showing that, are not showing them that there's something okay. by their actions. Okay. So I mean, security yeah, yeah, so you know, um, but you know, I dare say that the funny thing is that most men don't think that cheating is actually disrespecting their wives. Mm. Very mm. strange. Mm. Mm. Yes, they think it's just fun and games, mm. you know. I mean, the reason I even so, brought up the Yubo thing wasn't to slight, you know, black women. It's just that mm. I find that maybe, you know, in a way it links to what you're saying because mm. even if you're not Nigerian and you're a black woman, you suffer from so much yeah. you know, bashing as yeah. a, you know, first as a woman, then as a, a black, black woman. woman. Mm -hmm. So you're always having to prove that you're, you're worthy, kind yeah. of. Yeah. And so like, like you say, maybe that's yeah. the self-defense oh, that yeah. you're, you're doing, that you're, now you treat your fellow woman as if, you know, we must have our levels and I must still have my own level. And, you know, so it's, it's a pity. But I just feel that, you know, why I did this advocacy was I really do want to see we, my fellow women laugh yeah, just yeah, be yeah. Free. Just in themselves. Yeah. 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 Just be silly. Yeah. Yeah. Be silly. Be silly. Yeah. Be yeah. You know, because yeah. I used to wear flip flops on my school run and they would look at me in my flip flops and they were wondering if I was really, my child was even in this school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's yeah. why she was looking at me like, is this one worthy? Yeah. <laughs> Give you yeah. the tip of the finger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm busy saying, like, can I anyhow, like, I'm, you know, I'm not when, sure if it, I. You know, it also graduates to when they use children, mm -hmm. the little children, to also 
pump up their yeah. ego. Yeah. Well, yeah. You how know, many children do you have? How, children how do you old have? are and they? And see my children, they're so soft and, yeah. you know, yeah. they're this and that. <laughs> Meanwhile, yours are probably not, not maybe a bit hard. <laughs> I mean, the same woman, I, I think I may have said it here, the same woman, after she then followed me and I felt she followed me and she saw that my child was slightly more mature than my driver then, I had some a driver who came, she followed me and she saw the car and then the I had a, a useful looking car, you know, things are different <laughs> now. So the next day she saw me, she said, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now you have come into her uh, yeah. now she can accept yeah. you to her inner circle I'm like oh but you know if you got closer to her eventually she would probably advise you that I should step up that, my that you need to step I should up package your myself yeah, better exactly <laughs> you need that thing, yeah. <laughs> why not be yourself amen yeah we need to be freer with ourselves okay well there's certainly comfort and solidarity in a shared identity Sandra my sister in arms takes things further and she's actually going to take us back to move us forward after the break. So take it away, Sandra. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 